Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Starting. We're rolling, everybody. We're rolling, and we got a colon Powell. Yes. We did the colon junk. Oh, yeah, we did the colon thing. We need another punctuation. No. Hey, I'm in a comma. Oh, coma, comma. Aha, uh-huh. comma, chameleon. That's a fun one. Boy, well, should we tell the people what's going on right now? Well, I feel like you just you got to let it out now. I, I like to break. I like to let down the wall, chop yes. down the wall. Build it. Instead of building it, I want to take it down. Uh huh. Rub out the border, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're know. all people. They're imaginary lines, Joe. I know. By the way, I don't really feel that way. Don't tweet at me. I don't want people to be like, "You fucking." We need whatever. Uh huh. People always want to say what I think. Yes, they do do that. They do do. This guy hates this group. How do you know what I hate? Yeah, it's very strange. And you don't do that with food, you know? Uh, yeah, I've gotten painted as a both both things. You're getting painted? And I'm not really the thing. That must be nice. How about those people that paint? I used to fa- paint my face at like high school football games. Really? I was that guy. Oh, I was all school spirit. Black? My year, but black and red. Oh, so ooh, half wow. black. Well, you're Native American and Afro American. Yeah, the red skins and the black face. Yes. But dick. back then, I think it was fun. I mean, those were our school colors. It's uh-huh. not like we were green and yellow and I was just painting my dick black. Right, right, right. Yeah, you didn't have any colors at your school. I we had a couple. It. You had a couple in Whitman? Oh, yeah. We had uh, Charlie Prater, Mike DePino, Rachel Royster, and that is it. There you go. And I'm sure everybody got along swimmingly. The big three. I think so, yeah. Well, I was like, uh, I was unaware of race. We had the big, our family friends were the Coopers, Black, Jira, Shirley, and Crystal May. Mm-hmm. And they were my grandparents' church friends. My Uncle Dale's best friend was Jira Cooper. Jira. Jira, yeah. Gyroscope. And back then, when I was a kid, they were just always over the house. There was no knocking. They just walked in. We had what? dinner. And uh, so we were like a biracial fam. Yes, biracial. Um, and no one was ever like, these are black people. They're coming over. Right, it was just right. like, yeah, these are our friends. And uh, they were louder at the movie theater and sure. during the basketball game. But uh, that was dicks. fun to me. Yeah, it's all part of the culture. I remember I saw Home Alone with Shirley and Jaira and Crystal. And then Shirley kept being like, oh, I like this boy. This boy is crazy. And uh, I thought it was great. I was like, I was loving it. Oh, great. Was she was she stirring something with an apron on? No, no stirs. Right. She had M&Ms, I think. Ah, okay. Um, He's a good rapper. She's passed on since. But, boy, she was fun. And it was during the bowl. She got me really into Jordan. She was like, that Michael Jordan? And uh, I loved it. It was so fun. All right. But I never thought, well, I got a black friend. We're celebrating our differences or whatever. It was just a person. I was the same way. We had a kid, Eddie. And he would come over, and uh, one time, oh, this is this is this is some racial tension in Louisiana. His mom would just leave him because she had to go to work, so he'd just sit there on the porch, and he'd be hungry. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't leave him any money. So one time, my mom saw him eating <coughs> Doritos and that those juice boxes you puncture. Oh, uh, Hawaiian style. Uh, I don't know if it's Hawaiian. Yeah. Well, I think you I puncture think all <laughs> the one you put in the front. No, 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 no. You're thinking of Capri. Yes, anal. I'm thinking of Capri. But wasn't yes. there Hawaiian involved in Capri? No, no. What was Hawaiian? That wasn't was there? Hawaiian Punch. Hawaiian Punch. Domestic abuse. Capri Sun. Those were tough to get in there sometimes. Oh, it's like a hymen. You got to T.I. it. Occasionally, I'd get scissors and just cut it and then drink it like <laughs> a, like an MRE or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, MRE. Yeah, those are good. We had those during Katrina. Ah, oh, fun. Yeah. My mom would just give me that for lunch. I was like, thanks, bitch. Oh, that's this, exciting. This is for a... Uh, people dying in a cave so what's the juice box thing <laughs> so she saw him eating a juice box and a, and a drink and a dorito so she went up and was like that's crazy here's some real food she gave him like a sandwich and an apple nice and uh her mom was like you know when she came home she's like what's this yeah who gave you what huh yeah don't tell me how to raise my son you think you're better than me and my mom's like no no, no. oh it was, it was one a of those racial thing oh geez did yeah. she br- make it racial or she's like you white people eating this and a little bit are yeah that? mayonnaise and uh yoga and pumpkin spice with you whites right so. yeah i remember uh the race thing but i also remember like maybe getting corrupted with my uh the, my early like irreverent humor racial stuff because 
Gyro would make ah. you know race joke, and then we would make everyone would make fun of him. Like my he was five years older. My uncle was five years older, and then we'd be like, "Yeah, because you're a fucking whatever." Right. And I was like, oh, "I guess that's what you do." Yes, and uh, it was fun. But I remember one time a neighbor friend of mine. I won't say his name just in case you know he's like uh, he might be running for mayor someday. Sure. But there was like the um, what do you call it uh, the manger. Oh, Christmas. He had a manger Christmas scene, and there Baby was one Jesus. black prophet or knight or I don't know what they're called. Rapper. I what don't are they know. called? The th- wise men? Ah, yes. They were. were. Well, we were very progressive, so there was a black wise man, and then he did a bit. We had a big party. He goes, hey, it's Rodney King, and he was using two of the white <laughs> wise men to like, kick the black wise yeah, man, yeah. and then the head of the black one fell off, Ooh. and it kind of killed. Everyone was like, oh, God. Well, that's but accurate. It, but it was killing, and that was, uh, what was that, 91 or something? So I was sure. like 9 or 10, but 92. I remember being like, hey, this is funny. That's funny, and the black people enjoy it as well. I'm sure Jaira had a good giggle. Oh, he laughed. Yeah, he giggled till he was red in the face. Yes. Uh, red and black, Whitman Hanson, but... Early on, I remember being like, oh, that's like, I knew, like, you're not supposed to make a joke like that, but right. it's killing in the basement at this party. So I remember uh, being like, I'll make jokes like that. That's how I was. And Cut and to years later, it's no good. It's all the square honkies who came in later who didn't have the gyras growing up who go, hey, that's uh, inappropriate, you fat cracker, or whatever it is. Like, no, 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 this is what we do. You, you've been missing out. It's a bunch of square honks. Yes. Hey, the square honk. Honk if you're honky. Um... Yeah, so good times. We had the uh, I had a black kid uh, friend. He would uh, he was unbelievable at Mario Brothers. Unbelievable. They're very know. talented people. They are. They really are. And he could uh, he could he could tap the uh, the the top of the door jam. I remember, and that was exciting. You know, with the ups, they got the oh, vertical. Yeah. These uh, these spots is, <laughs> um, yeah, that was exciting. Good times. Well, so what I was gonna say is, oh, sorry, we got nothing. Ah, well, we just had a pretty good racial rant. Well, that rant. was fun. Well, we'll have a bunch of rants. We'll make we'll make it work. Yeah. But uh, it's a little scary because you got into Sunnyvale. They got a Sunday show. Yeah. I love Sunday and Sunnyvale. I love that Sunnyvale weekend. A lot of people don't love really? it. Really? Well, I love Heather. She's sweet as pie. She's a good egg. And I've had some traumatic times there where Sarah had food poisoning. Uh-huh. I thought I was going to get it, so she got me all these bananas and things for your stomach. Uh-huh. And then I was there when we got robbed. And oh. she gave Sarah a jacket that Sarah wears every day. Is that right? And she's really taking care of us. She's a she's a good good egg, and um, I love that area. I always rent a car. We go hiking. We drive around. We'll go down to Berkeley and stuff. We make, a, we make a time of it. Maybe I'll do that. Get a car. Go up to Berkeley. Uh huh. And do some hike. There's some spectacular hiking over there. Delta you can Berkeley. go to the, the Cal campus. There's great record stores what? at Berkeley. You can go. You can drive up to SF. The whole thing. How far is Burke? Not far, 45 minutes, 50 minutes maybe. Oh, all right, I'm down. Yeah, it's nice, beautiful country. I always get a car over there, plus that hotel's a little isolated, and you yes. get there's nice food around there. You can yes. drive around. I'm getting a car in Des Moines. I'm going to go to the Iowa State-Texas uh, football game Ooh-wee. at Names, Iowa. These rental cars, they cost money, obviously, and it's a chunk, but these quality of life things, especially with my diet now. Right, right. I got. I want options. I want to be able to drive and, and, and hang out. And sometimes these Ubers will add up, Fatty. Oh, they add. And in like Des Moines, it's 20 minutes for the Uber, and as we talk about frequently, they don't have any Muslims out there. They get square honks that want to oh, chat. Yeah, these honks with the chatting. It's oh, horrific. A square honk chat is one of the worst oh, things you can experience. An SHC. I got a, sorry, I got a booger or a hair or an itch. A little itch. booger sugar. But anyway, so Scratch we have to up. record. We haven't done this in a long time. We're recording not on a Monday, the week before, and two days after recording the most recent episode and the live episode. Yes. So I got, no, I don't have one note. We're square one. We got, we got an empty tank. I'm naked out here. I got zero to talk about except for... The live episode. You got that right. Which is up on the Patreon yes. now, I think. I think we're going to get some hot vid of that puppy as Holy well. Holy hell. Well, this was a, a classic. There's something magical that happens with these live episodes. Yes. And I'll be the first to admit, maybe the second, <laughs> you might have admitted, there's a couple clunky lives. Oh, We got a clunky yeah. live. Well, that, that crowd, there's a couple clunky lives, but sometimes the crowd is just cooking, and then sometimes they're a little tepid. And I, last night they were a little they were up and down. They were not cooking early. Early they no. were they were preparing. They were doing a little food prep. Yes. They were slicing the bananas and boiling the potatoes. Chopping some onions. And boy did I cry. I guess if you're boiling, you're cooking. 
So they weren't boiling. They were just chopping onions as a better. Yeah, yeah. And and I, of course, had my uh, seasonal panic moment where I, w- I just, from the moment I woke up at 9 a.m. on Monday, I go, I'm going to bomb. Oh, boy. Don't you hate that when you know it right away? Well, you don't know it. You well, think you know it. But I made it. I fruitioned it. You're feeling it. Yeah, and it just got in my head. And then Alan, our therapist, too, she always says, if you're feeling nervous, say it, and you'll be less nervous. Interesting. So I told you. I told uh, Takar. I told Donnelly. I was trying to get it out there, mm-hmm. and it didn't help. Oh, boy. Well, sometimes you got to remember, this is the most important thing that I have in my life all the time, is your thoughts are not reality. Yes! We start believing our own story. You here, tell here. a story, and then you believe it. Everybody hates me. Everyone thinks right, I'm dumb. Everything right. thinks I'm stupid. Everyone thinks I'm a hack. Yeah. And only half of those things are true. Uh-huh. And the reality is you're, you're going to be fine. It's going to be great. We have all these fans there. I'm sitting there before going, none of these people are fans. Yeah. I bet it's 20% fans oh, no. and 80% fucking schmucks that just showed up. Uh-huh. But it was a lot of fans. A lot of fans. A lot of gays came out. We sold some Tuesday shirts. We had a hot crowd at the end. And uh, we told some funny yucks. We got a lot of zingers in there. Oh, yeah. Sean Donnelly was great, who was our first. We didn't even mention that in the oh, pod. Oh, yeah. First guest, along with Kaplan, I think. And it was DeRosa Veter. and Veter was one episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Kaplan and Donnelly was the other one. Yes. Yeah, because originally, on we were going to have two guests. So the live one, I always think, is very close to what the original idea was. Sure. The four people. Yeah, but I guess when you got that crowd, though, it, it changes the dynam because you got to yuck it. You got to get those laughs. Well, you feel like you're, you're, you're boring them. Exactly. It's like I said it on before. I think I said it on air, too, or whatever. Is here, we can assume everyone's laughing or uh, at least interested. Yes. But at the pod, you just feel like you're bot. And guys like us, we're punchline guys. Oh, yeah. We're laughs per minute type of people. Not that I ever track that or whatever. LPM. But you sit there going, fuck, I need a laugh right here. Yeah. And so when you do something, and a lot, we had a lot of lines I think deserved a lot. You I had a couple agree. big ones that didn't get much, ah. but I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, they were tough. And it's weird when you're expecting it, because I'm like, oh, that was big. And then you kind of listen, you're like, what the hell? It's like dropping a penny off a uh, skyscraper. There you go. Well, it's, well, what's good about you is I'm so reactionary. I'm such a cunt with the reactions, because my mom had what you, had what you call still face. Mm. It sounds like a bad Batman villain, but... It's basically when you you tell your mom something, she goes, "Oh yeah," and doesn't react. Yes, and my I, parents have that. Yeah, we both. Your dad's got a still dick. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, so that the, the so I go off. Okay, how well am I doing? That joke didn't get a laugh. I'm doing horribly. But no, maybe you suck. Maybe you got it wrong. Maybe you missed it. And you had a few of those where you said, no, no, that's good. Blow me. And yeah. I remember being envious. Like, that's the way to do it. Well, sometimes, too, I think they're they're nervous. They're up front. They can see us. And sometimes you're laughing on the inside, just like comics. They listen to so that's many true. podcasts and watch so many shows that they have the thing that's like, that's hilarious. Right. It's hard to get that visceral gut. Yes. We also fucking really filled it up. It was all uh, come for about 35 minutes out straight. Out the gate, too, right? It was a cream pie in the in the start. Yeah, Daniel Simonson opened. He was great. Yeah, he killed. But I think they were confused by him, too, because yeah. he sounds quirky and weird. He went up dead cold. He's Norwegian. So uh, it was a little confusing, but uh, it, they came around. There was about 30 minutes where we were murdering. Yeah. And you can hear for yourself on the goddamn Patreon, and uh, but the Patreon is like you gotta be on there. Ah, it's a steal for the price minimum. Even if uh, even if it wasn't, a st- even if it was fifty bucks a month, uh-huh. just for all these live episodes. Yes, but uh, yeah, fun night. And then you sold quite a bit of merch. I would add. <laughs> I was leaving. There was a line around the corner. You were like uh, Stamos in yeah. '92. I had a couple Jews go, "Hey, can you bring out a few uh, T-shirts?" I said, "You got it." So I threw a bunch in a bag. Then I saw a stack of Tuesday shirts. I said, ah, "I'll throw these in too. I got to get rid of these." Mm-hmm. And they all sold. Sold every single piece of merchandise of me. Yeah, it was wild. But we had a lot of meet and greets, photos. Barbara Dugan up front, of course, oh, and a young Dugan, our, yeah. our, our sister Dugan. Not that Barbara's not young. I don't want to say that. No, she's a good-looking chap. But this one, this Dugan looked, uh, you know, younger. Yeah, I was kind of into it. Yeah, it was a hot. There was something going on downtown in the the Jean region. <laughs> Yours or hers? A little of both. She All had right. a back eye to front. A couple of Dugans, and then there was one woman. Did you meet that one woman that was like a model? She had like what? 
model face. Plus size. Nice jacket. Model face came up and was like, I think you're hilarious. That was a great show. Wow. And I went, because uh, we went, we separated. I stayed in the corner where we normally have, but you had to go to the merch area. Yeah, yeah, I'm a sellout. So it was yeah. hard because everyone was like, where's Mark? And I was like, well, we're fighting. We had a, and the people were like, what? And I'm like, yeah, he goes upstairs. It's the well, best. I figured I'd see him on the way out, but there's another door. Other door? Yeah, there's another exit. What? They shove shove people out that little keyhole at the end. It's this tiny door on the right side in the corner. Oh, I didn't know about the other oh, door. Oh, yeah. They pop right out on the 6th Ave. Well, there was a real beauty. I mean, she was something else. Oh, I missed the beauty. And she's a fan, so that yeah. was nice. And, uh, and there was a diversity of fans, which was nice. I had the Kevin Smith crew up by me, you know, the, uh, oh, yeah. the diehards. I saw a few of those people. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I felt great about the show. I felt awesome. I was like, oh, this is a great show. A lot of meet and greets. Photos, the whole oh, thing. Yeah. The comedians loved it. I come upstairs and I get a, hey, it's the other guy. Ah, that was tough. I, I hope I that guy dies. I hope he's in a car wreck and his ah. fucking mother catches on fire. Well, we got we got a shirt money out of him. But yeah, I wanted to kick that guy in the, oh. in the cans when he said that. What a bit. As I was leaving, it was a tough kick. I had to go take the long way home. I was like, ah. I don't want to take, I, I walked to A Street. I had to contemplate my whole life. My yeah. wife called. I was crying. Ah, jeez. Sorry, but, uh, Sarah. Sometimes I have this thing. I Again, we talked about it a couple episodes ago where... I'm I'm on the road so much, I'm gone so much. I just want to be home because you're gone so much. Yeah, that you like the feeling of being home. And it was a day I was out all day, so then the show ends, and I'm like, all right, I'll I'll see you later because t- I can be home by eleven. I just watched the eleventh hour with Brian Williams. Yeah, and uh, and Seinfeld at the same time. Old Ooh, Seinfeld. So we going back and forth. You toggling? I go a little back and forth. I love a toggle because a lot of these news stories, you're like. Okay, I got it. And yeah. it's all just talking about the thing. It's stupid. Well, there's, there's something throwbacky about being on TV with the because the, everything is so watch it when you want, streamy. And this is like, hey, I got to be on here. I'm zipping and zapping. I love a zip zap. And today I was watching tennis and the impeachment hearings at the same time. Woo! They were both like battles. Yeah. It was Nadal and the Russian. Oh, it was Trump and the Russian. I was going back and forth. A lot of Russia at play. It's, it's a verbal volley. Yes. VV. So, so that was fun. But I did the thing where I'm like, let me head back. I, that was a good night. Cut my losses. Be home by 11. And then uh, I, I, I'm walking. I get on the train. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm going home. Sarah's not even home. She's in the village where yeah. I just was. You're hanging out. Everyone's hanging. Everyone's at the cellar. Tom Green's over there, evidently, yes. and some other celebrity. And I'm Cookie. like, what am I doing? I'm heading home. Everyone's hanging out. I should be. I should be hanging out. Hanging out. So I go home and I'm watching TV sad. Ah, this is the second time now with this. I, I got to figure out how to balance. You get the instinct to get back to the nest. Well, I'm somebody, I'm an isolator. I like to isolate mm. and it's never good for me. I always feel better when I'm with people, so I'm working on it. And uh, I think you're getting better. I'm trying. I'm trying very hard. I had a uh, therapy sesh yesterday. Good sesh, but uh, Alan called me a pussy about 38 times. And he's, after a while, I was like, all right, you're turning into my father. Yeah, he's done that to me, too. Oh, really? You're a pussy. All right, okay. I feel better. Yeah, yeah. He calls Sagalo a pussy quite a bit, from what I understand. <laughs> um, well, he's not wrong there. Yeah, he's like, but they got a new pod, Sagalo and... Uh, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. It's uh, now that's a podcast. Yeah. No, Chaplin, Scott Chaplin, ah, Chap, the underrated cat. Oh, super so underrated. So funny, Sagalo yeah. rated. Uh, Sagalo, Brendan Sagalo, Scott Chaplin. They're great. They have a new podcast called Garbage Days or Garbage Boys. What are they talking about? Their act might be. A- <laughs> no, nah, right, no. I guess I think one of them uh, was a garbage hauler. Oh, okay. Something I'm on airplane like mode here, so uh, I can't look it up. But check them out. Those guys are funny, and uh, they're paying me to say this. So, All right. But it's one of those ones you see a pairing that you're like, now that's a show. There we There's go. There's your program. I like it. Fat guy, skinny guy. It's comedy gold. Yeah. So, and Sagalo, he's really reaching. He's got about nine podcasts. Oh, he's guesting yeah. on things. He's got a punk tattoo. It's embarrassing. So ah, geez. throw the guy a bone. He's a funny comic and yes. a sweet guy. Good egg, good kid, and yeah, funny, funny dude. The chaplain's killer. Hey, hey, folks, got to talk to you about Ray Khan. Man, do I love the Ray Khan. You know me, I'm a nut, I'm a wacko, I'm an introvert, I'm a piece of garbage. My brain is evil. If I don't have a headphone in, I go at it all day, and it ain't pretty. So I got to have a headphone or I'm going to kill myself. And that's why I love it, Ray Khan. These are the best wireless buds on the planet and you gotta go wireless now you don't want to be that chooch on the subway who gets his cord dangled up on a pedophile's finger 
It's the best. You guys know about Raycon. Awesome company founded by Ray J. He was sick of premium audio being so expensive, so he and a bunch of audio engineers and the music industry folk developed Raycon's line of awesome wireless headphones and earbuds. They sound just as good as any other brand, but they start about half the price. woo wee You can't go wrong. You hate the dangling wires, the stems, or all that crap. It gets in the way. It stinks. You don't want to catch that in an escalator. you lose an eyebrow. It's true. Wireless audio with seamless Bluetooth pairing. Oh, boy. I love them. They look cool, too. You got to get these buds. And plus, we got the holidays coming up, uh, Cyber Monday, Black Friday. Get cooking. So go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays to check out Raycon's Black Friday and Cyber Monday savings. I can't even tell you how good these deals are going to be, folks. You'll have to check them out for yourself on the site. That's buyraycon, B-U-Y, buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays to get an amazing Black Friday deal on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Get on it, kooks. Now let me run this by you there, Fat. So stick it in my ass and see if I let it live there. Ooh, all right. So I got the Seinfeld email. Ooh, I'm talking the whole. What's that I- mean? Itinerary. Oh, oh. When's the show? Thursday and Friday of next week. So it's right around the anal here. Twenty first and twenty second. Yeah. Ah, oh, jeez. You want to go? I would love to go. I'm going to. DC, and I'm going to the Penguins Islanders games Ooh. with Veter. We're going oh. to see Sid the Kid. That'll be fun. How about this, by the way, real quick? I'm going to I'm a big hockey guy. Thursday, I'm going to Islanders Penguins. Going to see Sid Crosby. Okay. And then Saturday in DC, I'm going to the Capitals game. Going to see Ovechkin. I'm going to see the two best players of our generation, two of the best of all time, in three days. Hey, there you go. It's like a, a phobia. To, phobia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we both went. The place Jerry to Stiller. Be. Yes. All right, so All right. you get the email. Get the shows the email. are next week. Yeah, which is very exciting. This week. Oh, yeah, this week. Sorry, this week. It's very exciting because it's like, ah, it, you know, it was a pipe dream. It was a phone call. It was a text. Now it's written in blood, baby. Period blood right on my shirt. Bloody email. Yes, you know, uh, bloody Sunday. This is the show. This is when it's happening. This is what you wear. This is what you do. This is the time, the whole thing. Wow. So that's exciting. So... I get a wild hair up my ass, and I'm going. I'm in the Jerry world now. You okay, know? I get a little, little juice cooking. Then this is from him or from his it's reps. From his, he's got a guy named Kev. Oh, big Kev, big Kev, yeah. Okay, and uh, the, the, here's the cute one. At the end, they tell you, you know, we'll do this, we'll do that, show up this time, Beacon Theater. Blah. After last show, we get pizza at this place. Wow. So I'm going to be in the pizza joint. Oh, you're going to get pizza with Jerry Seinfeld. With the sign. This is pizza, insane. Pizza, brains Oh, my God. I think I remember why we stopped coming here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Are Let's... you going to do that line, you think? Nah, I try not to do any show around uh, okay, him. Okay, okay. You know, he's probably heard every yada, yada, yada. You're the master of your asshole. But so hard not to because of we course. say it. So I mean, I reference Seinfeld 500 times a day. Exactly. I would do it if he wasn't there. That's the irony. Of course. But my here's my worry. I got two nights with him, four shows. He likes one green room. What's that mean? He likes to just ha- be in together. He wants to you oh, and him. that's good. That's nice. That's great. But you know me. Old mushmouth Norman here. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm gonna make a Holocaust joke. I'm gonna say something about his his girlfriend, or I'm gonna blow it. But this is the thing: he likes you. He knows you. He he's researched you. He's met you. He's seen the act. He was hiding in the room with the Schumer thing. He's listened. He knows. I don't know, but he doesn't know. I'm a I'm a degenerate. I like to booze it up. I like to put my face in a big fat gash. I want to lick a clit. I want to do some drugs. I'm on shrooms. I'm gay. He doesn't know about all that. Now you're creating a story and you're believing ah. it. You got to not believe the story. Interesting. Ah, there's a story in your head. It's just a story. Ah. He's right. going to be thrilled. It's going to be exciting. You're going to hit it off. Ah, This wow. is going to be big. He's going to charm his pants off. He'll make jokes. Reference, you know, Fatty Arbuckle, whatever right, he likes. Right, he likes that. Mention a Rodney thing you just saw. Uh-huh. And uh, you'll be fine. It'll be right. great. I appreciate the positive. Yeah, don't believe the story. Fear uh. is just fear, and your thoughts are not reality. And uh, my mother shaves her bush on Wednesdays. Yes. Just remember all those things. All right, all right. I'm j- I just know me, and I know I, I got that. 
you get that urge and you go, I ah, don't say it, don't say it. Oh, I just said it. I called him the K word that's for Jews. Uh, but, Kramer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I also, I also made that joke uh, with his uh, handler guy. We talked on the phone. I was like, what if I go full Michael Richards? He was like, we'll see you then. Okay. No laugh, no nothing. I was like, that was bad. So what does it say? You got to wear a suit. You yeah. got to get there early. You got to. I know about the 15 minutes. You can't go long, yep. but you can't go short. That's even worse. Brutal. And you can't wear a black suit because that's what he wears. So I got to go oh. blue suit. Oh, blue suit's better. You think? Black suit's pretentious. What? Well, black suit only works if you're Seinfeld. You got to be Seinfeld ah. or DiCaprio or like hosting the Oscars or at a funeral. Interesting. Blue's the way to go. Look, what? flip through the TV. You see a guy in a black suit. It's too cool. Uh, too cool. That's the issue with the black suit. I didn't Everyone's know Everyone's wearing blue. I picture black suit like funeral. Funeral, reservoir dogs, but like Oscars and stuff. Okay. A black suit is very cool. I got it. A gray or a blue is ideal. All right, well, I'm throwing on the big baby blue. and Baby uh, blue? No baby. Just oh, kidding. Okay. Yeah, miscarriage. Just the baby. Just with the bathwater. And, uh, yeah, so just going to get a blue suit, and here's the clinker. So I got a hair up my ass, and I go, hey, Jer, and stop me if I've told you this, I see this Ford V Ferrari is cooking. Yeah, you told me you were going to say this. Yes. So I put an hour aside. I lit a candle. I took my pants off, and I, I texted him. And uh, I wrote, hey, if you want to go see that movie, I'm, I'm, I'm dying to see it. I'm jonesing to see this flick. Okay. Let's hang. Nothing back for a couple hours. I go, ah, that might have been bad. Because that's a big level jump. I mean, that, that's one thing to do a gig with a guy, but to go to a movie, that's a date. A movie's big. A I know. A big. I feel that way. I'm going to see a play with Ryan Hamilton, and I'm nervous. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude. who buys? Do I get there too early? Do right. I hold his hand? Do you wear a blazer? Do you touch knees? You know, that's a lot going to happen here. Ironically, he opens for Seinfeld. Uh-huh. By the way, he's opening for Paul Simon. Ryan Hamilton? Yes. I thought Simon retired. He's back, baby, for one. I had a feeling. Where? <sighs> Ryan Hamilton opening for Paul Simon? Unru I wonder if Jerry got him the gig. Wow. That's amazing. But either way, I asked him to the movie. I thought, this could be good because it's also you don't have to talk the whole time. And then you get to talk after and you have a talking point. That's why the movie's the best date. It's a great date, especially for this old curmudge. Man or woman. So... I throw it out there. A couple hours go by. He goes, ah, I'm in Vegas next week. Mm. I'm going to see it there. I can't wait. So I, I can't wait for you. I got to just see it. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow, this is, we're, we're, we're That's talking. That's something. You this should fly something. to Vegas. Yeah, I thought about it. Somebody else mentioned that. I bet he could get a private screening also. I'm like, yeah. I bet he could get a copy. Yeah, I think he wants to do it the real way. I, I don't know. He's like obsessed with this shit. So then he wrote, by the way, now this is where it gets kooky. I saw that video of you at your show with the guy doing me. Now let me what was this? Let me uh, unpack this, as they say. <laughs> Please let me, do. Let me fudge pack this. So he's watching video. Did you get nervous? He's going to watch the podcast. Of course, oh I did. I'm talking about Rogan. I'm Jim and Sam. I've, I've done eight hours on on the sign. Well, let alone talking about him. Just all the times we say cunt and queef uh, and fuck and yeah. fag and well, fruits. Now you see why I'm scared to be in a green room with the Jew. All right, so. That won't help either. But he writes back, I have, I have a show called Stick or Treat. I'm familiar. And every year, I'm just I'm unpacking for the folks at home. Ah, I see. And every year, somebody does a Rodney, a Jerry, a Newhart, a, a Joan Rivers. You get it. And they do. we do a two-minute impersonation. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole fun of the show. It's Halloween. You dress up. Everybody goes all out. I did Tracy Morgan. I got hit by a Walmart truck once. I did Pee Wee Herman. I got caught jerking off. You, you get it. Big show. Huge show. Yes. One guy last year did a Bernie Mac Sanders. Oh, yeah. So you get creative with it. I did Kenny Banya and really ate my dick. Ah, uh, well. Well, he would. Nobody liked it. I did Dane one year, like 12 years ago, and that killed. That was great. That was a long time ago. We were pretty sloppy. We were both in the bag for that That was one. 2010. That's when you stole all the booze. It was great. Oh, yeah. That was like old. I barely knew you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That photo, that's that night right there. That green frame. That's it, that yeah. That sticker street right there. I'm hammered right there. I think oh, we yeah. All are. Oh, yeah, you were shithoused. It was insane. <laughs> That was when I was. That was the first time I was like, "This guy is fucking crazy." Because oh, the bartender yeah. went to get something, and you got behind the bar and poured everyone glasses of vodka. Yes, yes. I got a photo of it, and uh. there's a big sign that says, "Keep your eyes on your wallet." <laughs> 
people in this neighborhood have sticky hands and you were stealing the vodka. I always thought it would make a great album cover. Those were simpler times. But it was amazing to me because I was poor and a drunk and you just gave me a 16-ounce glass of vodka. Oh, yeah. What's better than that? And I was like, this will last me all night. And 10 minutes later, it was done and I was shitting on a head. Oh, yeah. I think we, we did that thing that night where we ran out and ran on top of cars. Oh, that sounds about right. Yeah, you know, you go hood to roof to trunk yeah. to hood to roof yeah, to trunk. Yeah, there was a lot of that. I so, was a bad person. Yeah, me too. All uh, right, so... Where wait. was I? Stick or treat. Yes, so somebody does Jerry, as they do every year, but you need a twist. So he, he did Jerry talking about his 17-year-old girlfriend from the 90s. Oh, no. I know, and I'm the guy bringing him out. Oh, my God. So it's this, your show. It's my show, and I, I bring a Jerry sub. He comes out, bam, 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 bam. he's got the blazer on, the tie, and the high sneakers, and he goes, uh, what's the deal with homework? My girlfriend's always doing it. And it killed. <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, he had a million of it. They, they, they were great. I got to hand it to the guy. I wish okay. I could give his name. Why can't you give his name? I forgot it. He did it publicly. I know. I'm not saying. I, I can't, just can't think of it. You know who will figure it out? Tuesdays with Facts. We love this kid. Go follow Tuesdays with Facts yeah. on Twitter. This guy's doing the whole episode. Every digit, semicolon, anal, anything, he, he nails it. He's correcting it. He's giving a story. I mean, we love the account, whoever you are. Thank you. Killing it. All right, so the thing goes viral. This kid puts up the video. It goes viral after Stick or Treat. <laughs> viral. Viral. Oh, my God. Get some Valtrex. I know. So now I'm like, well, what are the odds? He's gonna he's uh, high up on a mountaintop, you know, polishing an Emmy. He's, uh, he's not going to see this. And he texts me with the movie text. He goes, saw that, that clip. And that's all he wrote. Oh, my God. That's all she wrote. And I went, oh, my God. What do I do? And I panic. I freeze. Oh, this is scary. I freeze, and then he goes, hilarious. Whoa. How cool is that? Wow, he thought it was funny. Maybe he's watching a different clip. Oh, God. From a different year. Well, he said your show, the Halloween show or something like that. But you're saying someone does Jerry every year, so maybe it was a different one. This is true. But, but I wrote back, oh, glad you liked it. Huh? Comedy, queef, and he never wrote back. Yeah, you want to say, well, I wasn't responsible for yes. it. It's just my show. Exactly, but I, he, he doesn't like a lot. He doesn't give you a lot. He's a still texter. Right, right. So I threw that out there, and he said, hilarious. And I'm like, all right. But what a cool dude. I feel like a big celebrity could really run with that. Like, how dare you? Of you, course, I'm going to yeah. sue your ass. You know, but he was all right. Well, he seems like a laid-back guy, and uh, I just love it. Comedians and cars, I watch it. I love it. Love it. And, uh, yeah, he's created my favorite things of all time. Yeah, he's a good creator. He knows what he's doing out there. Yeah, B-movie I never watched. Nah, that wasn't great. I never saw it. It had a, it had a moment. But the TV show is the defining thing in my life. Yes. And uh, Comedians and Cars is like my second favorite thing. Love it. There's some real gems in there. The, the B movie, it just, the whole time you're going, why is he doing this? Yeah. Like, Comedians and Cars, like he likes these guys, he likes comedy, he likes coffee, he likes cars. Got it. B movie, did he get stung by a bee? Is his wife a bee? What is it? Well, I think uh, maybe he likes bee cups. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he likes bees. He's fascinated by bees. He's got okay. a whole bee thing. And then he wanted to make a movie. All and right. it was fun. He likes kids. He had kids. Yeah, that's true. Kids. Yeah, yeah. Kids like a bee. You make a movie. If you can make a movie, you might as well make a movie. I'm not I'm all for making a movie, but it was just a weird choice. Right. But hey, to each is a bee. Yep. Honey Nut Cheerios. Well, that's exciting. So that's this week. I mean, when the people hear this, that's two days from now. I'm trembling. I'm in my apartment. I got the hairbrush. I'm doing my clean set. Just back. I'm timing it out. You know, I'm putting the suit on with with boxer shorts. <laughs> yeah, you running the set around town? I should be fifteen sharp. Yes. So I'm gonna run it next week pretty good. But I have the jokes down. I have the order. So. And it's one show each night. Two a night. Two each night. Yeah. That's gonna be some pretty pennies. And I'm gonna talk. To, it, it's paying very well. And I'm gonna talk to Hammy Hamilton. Yes. Get the scoop. Wow, that is so exciting. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. What you want is to graduate, not graduate, but get to some road gigs. You can be in that yes. plane with them. Oh, Because Hamilton's like, you sit in that seat, that's your seat. And then on the road, I think, is when you go to the movies. Because oh. here, he'll go back to his house. Wee. But on the road, it's like we go for a walk, we go see a movie. That, yeah. like, that's going to be something. So you got to get those road dates. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm a big, fat cuck. I've watched everything he's done. So I watched the Sebastian one. And they talk about, he's like, yeah, I'm a bad texter. I get the information. I get out. And then him and Sebastian are hanging out all night. And he goes, you want to come over for dinner? And Sebastian's like, huh? He's got like a mouthful of pastrami. Like, huh? He goes, come, come be my guest. So he calls his wife. 
You want to have Sebastian? Sure. He goes to dinner. That would be the ultimate. Oh. Going to Seinfeld's house just to see the way he lives. See where the, the Where are the Q-tips, the sock drawer? You got to go through that medicine cabinet. Oh, you better believe Imagine I'm finding that. see the prescription with fucking Jerome Seinfeld in oh, there. Oh, yeah. Find some Magnum condoms. I'm going to be in that bathroom for an hour. Oh, my God. That's exciting. Take photos of his pubes. Yeah, but that's, see, that's the thing. I feel like he hears this. He's like, oh, I'll never have that guy over. Wow. Well, I'm clearly joking, Jer. Probably won't hear it. All right. And if he does, it's flattering. I guess. If you heard a young podcast, two whippersnappers, and they said, boy, wouldn't you kill to be in Mark Norman's apartment? I'd like to uh, come on his wife's underwear. Yeah, I wouldn't want them over here. Well, you don't want them over there, but you'd be like, ah, that's sweet. I guess, but I want to go over there. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Well, you might invite him over. It's not Everyone's got some ego. Of you course, know what I mean? ego. Big ego. He's got ego, so he's going, hey, boy, this guy is going to blow me. I'll have him over so he blows me. Maybe. I'll blow him and his wife and his kids. I'll blow your kids. What do you think? I like Steve Rogers? I just want him to blow me. Ah, uh, oh, that I makes say, sense. come over. He's shitting his pants going, I'm going to see Liz's toilet. I'm yeah. going to smell his wife's bra. You know? Good he's, point. He's not even fun to be around. That's true. And he's got a big hog, and he's blowing you. Oh, yeah. Makes nice hog. Even more flattering. Lego my ego. No. Funny comic, bad person. Yeah, he stinks. Uh, just kidding. We're He's kidding. got a podcast, too. Oh, who with, doesn't? Uh, who's that guy? Seinfeld, actually. Andrew Chavone or Chivio. You know that guy? Pavone? No, that's uh, Pavone. Alex Pavone. Ah. He's from uh, Canada. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, I'm going to Toronto in February. Buckle up, folks. Oh, Toronto. Yeah. Have you ever worked Toronto? I've never worked Toronto I once in my life. I love Toronto. I love Toronto. I've never worked there other than with Louie. Yeah. I did the arena in Massey Hall, which is so insane. That's done, so like, funny. Two legendary venues. Wait, both there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, but I've never worked there on my own. I get more emails than any other Venn place saying, hey, come to Toronto. But comedy bar seats 40 people. Right, right. And then yuck, yucks, you got to do a whole thing. You got to blow the guy. But that's why I love my coups of an agent. Because I go, get me in a Toronto. And she goes, maybe we can find a small theater. And she gets on it. Yes. My agent, he's on it, but he can't quite get the, the right deal. Aha. Uh-huh. Because it's tough. But yeah, fun city, nice city. Great city. It's the New York of Canuck. And then I'm going to I'm going to Vancouver as well. I love Vancouver. What happened there? The comedy mix closed. I'm going to do the yucks. <laughs> Yeah. That's a great city. We had a great hang there that time. Oh, yeah. One of the great comedy weekends ever. You, me, Phil, Sam, Veter, Carmen Lynch. Wow. 2013, I believe. Yes, February. I had just been sober. I was counting days. I was like 60 days sober. Yeah, I remember I was going to Conan right after. Yes, that's right. You were the first one of all of us to do a late night, I believe. That was the big late night debut. Oh, wow. We went to the Titty Bar. Oh, yeah. uh, We went bowling. Maroon 5. What? No, that's a band. Orange Five. That was What's the name that? of the strip club. Oh, right, 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 right. Five Orange. Something yeah, like we that. went to that titty bar. Boy, that was a great time. Then we went down like Skid Row. We saw people shooting heroin, which oh, was fun. Yeah. Rented bikes at Stanley Park. Woo! I remember I was hung over. You're like, come out. I, I pushed through it. It was with that seawall. It cured me. Yeah, I got a nice, uh, nice photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were sober. That's what I said. How long? Like sixty days. Ooh. I was brand new. Now I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna try to go to Sunnyvale and not drink once. Okay. Give me some tips. I'm, I don't think I can handle it. What do you mean? I, I don't know if I can hack it. What do you mean? You go days without drinking. Of you just co- don't drink. Of course, but it, I, the road. It's uh, what do you call it? Uh, Tough. No. Lonely. No. Isolating. You, uh, you know, hard. It, Pavlovian. Difficult. What's that? That's the guy with the uh, the bell. Isn't there a dog? Pavlov's yes, dog. Yes. He did a thing where. He rang a bell, gave a dog a steak, right, and then after like two days, he could just ring the bell and the dogs would water, right, the mouth would water, salivate. Yes, much like a pussy when it gets excited. Yeah, I ring all kinds of bells. I got a dry pussy in my house. You got to get a wind chime. But either way, it's Pavlovian. I get on a plane, I fall asleep. Pavlovian. Yes. I go on a road, I want a cocktail and some labia. Well, have a cola, have a coke, or something, or just don't just. Don't drink. Just don't. But yeah, I mean, look who's talking. Waffle face. I haven't, I haven't drank in years. That's true. But I'm uh, about the waffle though. I haven't had a waffle in weeks either. Well, oh. you gotta. For me, like the the boo. Now I'm going through this with the diet change. You gotta hit a real bottom, and you gotta really be like, fuck. I need to stop doing this because I'm fucking gonna want to kill myself. Yeah, I've never done the bottom yet. Yeah, you got no bottom. So I guess I'm not an alcoholic. I don't think you're an alcoholic. Oh. I think you like to. Sh- 
<laughs> I think hey, you like to drink. This is very nice. Yeah. This I mean, nice to give her I mean, you don't day drink. I, you're not no. shit house. I, I haven't seen you drunk in a long time. Well, I've been drunk. I just I can cap it. But I mean, you weren't drinking last night. No. When I no. saw you. I try to take the weekdays off, but I'm saying that road. It's like Saturday night. I got a Sunday show. I got nothing to do in the morning. Fuck it. Let's pour that tequila. Yeah, I think you just got to, uh, I mean, you're very disciplined with other things, with writing, with exercise, and uh-huh. you just go, yeah, just let me not drink today, and yeah. uh, you got to go one day at a time, yep. and then you just go, yeah, tonight I'll take the night off. And I'll tell you, those mornings when you wake up and you didn't drink, you go, holly, goddamn, Louie, I feel good. Yeah, you feel fresh. I'm starting to feel that now with diet. I'm starting to be go. like, okay. Um, but yeah, it's not easy. You just got to fucking, you got to. Click in there and be like, all right, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this click. right now. Yes. But yeah, it's it's fucking, it's hard because you need a vice. You got to have a vice. It's a bad channel, but, but boy. This is what I'm trying to say now with realizing it takes a million fucking Buddhist books and every day the meditation and the meetings and the whole thing. Finally, I just go, why do I need a vice? What are you talking about? You don't, you need, don't need a vice. You don't need. I'm like, well, maybe I'll make it working out will be my vice. Or maybe this will be I'm like, why don't you just not have a fucking vice? How about this? No you, vice hobby. A hobby. Well, I got a lot of hobbies. Ex- exchange them. I read a lot. I'm meditating, you know, whatever. Mandolin. mandolin, playing some mandolin. But it is it is difficult. But who are you? Is, you have someone featuring? You like the feature? I don't know the feature. I didn't, I rec- I didn't recognize the pick. Uh, well, maybe... Uh, he you go back, you try to write something, you work on something, you do yeah. extra push-ups at night, you go back to the room. I already told some queef I'd do his pod, some local cuck. Yeah, get a pod going. I think you just have to click it in there, close that door on. I'm not doing anything. this. I'm not drinking this weekend. You got to click in. You got to snap it in. Yeah, you take, take a weekend off. All right. And then uh, you'll like it. You'll feel good. I will feel good. And if you're out in Sunnyvale and you see me drinking, don't take a photo. Why is oh you got what are you in trouble? Well, just because uh, I feel like he'll I'm gonna come back here and go hey I made the whole weekend and somebody's gonna post on Insta. Ah, jeez. And we we knew a comic who used to do that. He would tell his wife oh I'm not drinking and then he'd uh, somebody would go can I get a photo and he'd go yeah yeah and he would do this. Remember oh that? yeah, you can't get away with nothing these no, days. No 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 no. It's a tough tough time to be out there, but. Uh, yeah, you can do it. Just All go right. a couple days. I'm going to do it, but it, one day at a time. I've noticed, and maybe it's the vice thing talking, but every time I don't drink, I'm eating milkshakes and, uh, you know, Ruby Tuesday. I'm at Panda Express. I'm eating ice cream all day. Well, that's what I've been doing for fucking seven years is eating all these cookies and candies and soda, but we're, we're aging out of it. I can't do it anymore. No. I can't have the shit anymore, we're old. and I got chronic fucking illness, Yeah. and uh, now I'm eating it today. I just went to the diner just now. I had a nice... Fucking egg and cheese omelet with a side of broccoli. Woo! Ate some nice broccoli because I'm going low carb. And I put butter. You can eat butter and All salt. Right. So I put a bunch of salt and butter on that broccoli. Had a big bowl of broccoli. And now I'm changing my tastes and shit. Ah. And I'm eating slow. I'm doing a nice meditative eating, 20 seconds per bite, 25 seconds, whatever the fuck. And I was talking to my buddy Diego. He's a vegan guy. And I'm like, how do you feel full? And it gave me this perspective of like, well, I don't, I don't feel full in the meaning that you're thinking full. Because my meaning of full is eating a full chicken parm and being like, woo, oh. Yeah. He's like, but I eat, I feel satiated. Yeah. He's like, I have a smoothie, maybe an oatmeal with some berries in there. I'll ah. eat it. And then you just feel nutrients like coursing through your body. And then you just go on. You go out and you live your day for several hours, and then you get some more nutrients. Uh-huh. That's how we're supposed to be doing it. I have the full thing, with, same as alcohol, sex, food, where you're like, let me drink 25 yes. beers. The idea of having a beer and a half is fucking stupid. I it's know. not full. It's not fulfilling. Right, right. But it does. What if you like a nice IPA, you know, on a hot day? I do like an IPA, but I also, I don't like feeling like shit and I having agree. horrible relationships and getting in a fucking fight and hating myself and texting yeah. my ex, so. No, no, I'm not saying you should booze again. I'm just saying, like, you say, what's the point of having one? I'm saying it's, it tastes good. Yeah, exactly. Those people, I'm saying for my, same with right, right, right. eating to fulfillment. Yeah. This idea of like, oh, now I'm not full. You have to change your idea of what full is. But you're like, I have three eggs with a piece of cheese and five pieces of broccoli. In my mind, I'm like, I'm not full. Like right now, I could eat a full meal. Oh, yeah. But you have to be like, no, you're full for now. Right, You're right. full of nutrients. 
live your life. And then next meal, it makes the meals more valuable even. Yes, valuable meal. Because you're like, oh, I'll get to eat again. Let me have a piece of fish. Right, right. It's But it's tricky. The road is a fucking unhealthy place. And we're living an unhealthy lifestyle in general. Sure. With the airplanes, the time change, the lack of sleep. Like I think historically or whatever the fuck, uh, evolutionary. We're supposed to go to bed at the same time. Oh yeah. We're supposed to like go to bed and wake up to, with the sun and like yes. work in the field and yes. like be home with another a partner. Yes. But where it's unnatural to get on a plane every week. Oh, get out of town. And trying to keep a schedule and get there and fucking and then uh, the meet and greet and the different city, different weather. Hell, not even the social media. That part's not even healthy. That's not normal. Oh, horrifically unhealthy. So yeah, there's a whole gumbo of just bad news bears cooking in a pot, and we're we're consuming all of it. Yeah, and again, like this is why I'm renting a car on the road. Is I'm like. Normally, it's like, oh, Burger King's, I'll go to Burger King, or I can walk here, or I'll get room service. Yeah. I'm trying to go and get some healthy shit. But I'll tell you, I've been eating these whole foods. You start to feel good. No, like, you this feel is nice. better. And then you, the first time you break and go eat that chimichanga, A, you feel guilty, and B, you feel horrible uh, physically. Yeah, I just went to the diner just now, and my, and my omelet came with toast and potato. <laughs> And I was with my friend. I was like, "You, you eat the potato," Good and then she didn't you. want to eat the potato, so she's like, "Should I take them off your plate?" And I'm like, "No, no, no. I'm not. Yes. Let them just sit there. I'm not retarded. I and cannot eat a potato." I was like, "I'll have a piece of toast," and then she's like, "Are you sure you don't want the toast?" The cut, and I was like, "No, I think in my diet I can have one piece of toast." All right. I started eating the broccoli. I was like. I'm not going to have the toe. I'm going to leave the toe. Yeah! So I feel good. Good for you. And it's a lot of doing these things that you don't want to do. That's what Alan's always talking about. Where I'm like, I don't feel like working out. And you're like, he's like, that's even more. That's an even better time to work yes. out. Yes. Because you have to. He's like, you keep having this idea that you're supposed to be doing things that are supposed to You think everything should be pleasurable. Right. No, no, no. It's like you got to do these things not because it's fun. Because you're supposed to do that. Here, here. Or it's good for you. Yes. I went to the gym today, and it was pain. You know, I do 15 of a certain thing, and after the first one, I go, I, I'm dying to leave. But you just got to hang in. And um, then once you leave, you're like, oh, that was I did it. I'm the same way, and I talked to Ther- Alan about it. I'm like, I don't even know what to do at the gym. I'm not a gym guy. I don't even know what workout I'm supposed to be doing. He's like, that's bullshit. He's like, first of all, you could Google a workout. Yeah, they know. He's like, second of they all. They know. Just do the one thing you know for an hour. He's yeah. like, you know how to bench press? Do a bench press for one straight hour. Yeah, they got you. And man. I'm like, all right, I'll bench press for an hour, whatever. We're, we're looking for outs. But like anything, it's once you're doing it, you're like, oh, this feels better. But our instinct is to do the opposite thing Yep, yep. of uh, what you're supposed to be doing. For whatever reason, it's a sickness. I told you I ordered a piano. Oh! I just bit the goddamn bullet. Get baby. yourself a piano. You got a bench for a desk for it there. Throw an electric right up there, and it's gonna sit there and collect dust for six weeks. But eventually, I'll touch a key. Yeah, what the fuck? I'll tell you, Louis can play the fuck out of the piano Is now. That right? Yeah, when this all his whole thing went down, he, I got a mandolin. He got a piano, and he can fucking play. And he plays like. Bach and shit. Well, Bach to the future. He was always a pianist. Yeah, he could really fucking tickle him. All right, those ivories. It's, the, a, it's a very interracial instrument. Oh, yeah. Ebony and ivory. Well, this is a weird app. I hope people are enjoying it. We uh, kind of went on a self-help jag there, which well, I'm not against. Yeah, I need I need help all the time. But uh, this diet thing, I, I feel pretty good. And I appreciate everyone sending me all these keto things and diet things, and it's nice, and the reflux is getting a little better. Don't you hate, though, when you go somewhere and there's a, there's a, a plate of cookies, mm-hmm. and everything in your body wants to eat that goddamn chocolate chip, and you just walk right by it. Well, you got to have the same thing with, with booze is that thing of like, uh, that would be nice, but even like a beer is not going to kill you, but that feeling of, uh, well, it might, but that yeah. feeling of like, I'm going to hate my, or a, cook, I should, a cookie's a better example. Like a cookie's not going to kill you, but you're like, I just don't want the self-loathing yes. afterwards. Let me just skip that. Yes, Because exactly. that's what I do. As soon as I do it, I'm like, I, had, I shouldn't have had that cookie. What am I doing? Right. And it was like that with the waffle fucking addiction. I wouldn't even enjoy it. The whole time I'm eating, I'm like, what right. am I doing? This is stupid. And I anticipate that negative. I had, a, I had a scuffle with a chum recently. We had a bit of a, what do you have, ballyhoo? I don't know. What do you, we had a, yeah, we had a little bit of a back Fist and forth. Cups. Just uh, verbal, and it got pretty ugly, and we've got like to uh, fuck you, don't talk to me ever again. Oh my god! It got, it got pretty Jesus ugly. H. I'm not gonna say who. Uh, and 
you know, weeks went by of radio anal, and okay. I go, all right, today I'm texting him. Day went by, I never did it. Because you, you go, I'll do it today, and then you, you actually want to go do it, you, you just go, fuck that. Story of my life, yeah. yeah. I'm like that with everything in therapy. Everything he says, I'm like, all right, I'm on it. And yes, then you go, oh, yes. Right. But this is what the therapist says, Alan. It's the same with the food and the booze and the relationships. I'm like, I'm suffering. He's like, not enough to do anything. So you have to get to ah. some kind of bottom with all these things. Like a knife. Because you haven't done enough to do anything yet. Where I'm like, yeah. I'm su- all I have is anxiety all day long. And he's like, well, you don't have enough anxiety to actually change anything. Woo-wee. And that's how you get to the change is you reach some kind of bottomless pit where you're like, let me try something. Yes. Here, so, here. So did you, has it happened? So I reached out, and the whole thing is you go, well, what if I text him and he doesn't get back to me? Boom, that's rejection. What if I text him and he goes, no, fuck you, I'm still mad. That hurts too. Right. And then so, but if you get to that point, you might fight again, and that will be even closer to the resolution. Well, Whereas if you don't do anything, there'll be no resolution. And again, you're playing the movie in your head and you're believing it. Yeah. You're reacting for him. You're exactly. already in his head. So now you're not just in your own head, you're in his head. Boy, you don't need Al anymore. You're on your own. Well, I have the tools, but you need the reminders because yes. you lose the tools. That's Every day I wake up, my toolbox is in the fucking cellar. These immigrants, they take your tools. Yep. So... Uh, I text him and it was uh, no response. And then the next day he wrote back, "We're cool, man. We're cool, and we're back." Okay, and cool. It, it's it, good. It was terrifying. And then uh, we we met in okay. person, and that changes everything. Well, then you grow. Then you're yes. growing. Then it's water under the asshole, and then you mm. got a nice. It's better. And we're back. And then you got another notch on your friendship, dick. Exactly. Well, think about this. I think about this a lot, and I think about this when I have people that I'm like, oh, I'm friends with them now. Think of all your good friends. At some point, yes. you were fighting. You were at a mat. You it were happens. mad with them. We're Every human. friend you have, because it's almost like you're not close with someone until you have that kind ah, of uh, situation. Yes. You it's need like, that situation. Same with a girlfriend. Until you hit her, it's pretty neutral. Exactly. you got to hit your girlfriend. Yes. It's very important. T-shirts. I'm selling those next week. you got to hit your girlfriends. i got XLs. Or your boyfriend. Mm. We're no uh, We're one-trick ponies here. We're very inclusive. Hit your uh, or your non-binary ah, uh, hit, cisgender. Hit your partner. Maybe that'll be the t-shirt. I hit like that. Partner. I just work with a guy. Very funny, nice guy, smart guy. He kept calling his girlfriend a partner, mm. and I didn't. I've never heard anyone do that. He was a cowboy. Well, he's saying uh, he's he's being gender neutral or whatever. Yeah. But I didn't. I thought he meant like a business partner. He kept oh. being like, my partner this, my partner that. Right. And uh, I just assumed he was in business. But <laughs> he's uh, in the pussy business, I guess. I, I guess so. He's in the relationship business. But yeah. Um, yeah. And then I was like, oh, girlfriend. And then I felt like an old man. I was like, right. you your girlfriend. And I was like, oh, I'm like the guy in the movie from 1956 who's like, eh, you know, whatever. I guess, but that's a little bit of a reach. I mean, I feel like if, if you're a girlfriend out there, I f- both feel like most of them would go, just call me a fucking girlfriend. Yeah. This, this partner is so, uh, d- what, there's like a division there. It's almost like in- not intimate. But again, we sound old. I don't want to be the guy that's like, you got a Negro friend? And I they're guess. Like, dad, what are you saying? I'm like, I don't know. He's a Negro, isn't he? And they're I, like, Jesus Christ, Dad, we're not saying that. I get it, but they, there's uh, degrees here. Hey, what are you going to call her? Uh, uh, you know, them next? Well, girl is offensive because it's mm. a woman, and friend feels like it's uh, under... Cutting or belly or underachieving. Under I don't know. Because it is weird. Like, I remember that with Sarah before we got engaged. It then becomes, becomes weird to be like, my girlfriend. You're like, haven't you been together six years? You live right. together. It sounds weird to be like, my, my boyfriend. I know, but fiance sounds so cheesy. No, fiance is nice. Ugh. It's French. Oh, fiance. It's French. I don't know. Oh, my fiance is over there. Right. Maybe the dingo ate your baby. Well, that's why my wife is next. It's like, boo, it's hard. Wife. Wife. Yes. My, and did, then partner did you sounds. Fuck my wife. Weird. It sounds. Uh, I don't know what it sounds. It sounds. Str- it just sounds like to me. Partner means something else. There's no personal like, to partner. You're my partner. Well, right. my partner in the podcast. It's well, a, co-host. Whatever. Like a buddy cop movie. You know. Ah, I work alone. He's my partner. Fuck him or whatever. I've never had a partner my whole career. Yes. You know I can't work with a partner, but or, then we can work together and right. work it out. Or the partner died and he's got like a shrine to him, and then the other guy comes in and knocks over the shrine. He's like, I'm your new partner, and it's symbolic and mm. it's cliche and uh. Shitty movie. Howdy, partner. Yeah. Uh-huh. Partner Posey. Oh, I love her. 
Oh really? Oh yeah, we've talked about it. I met her. She's a cool, cool cat. She's a she's a she's a real number. She's one of those. She picks her roles. She's in control of her life. Well, that's what she's. That's a. It seems like, but then she has a whole thing about ageism and uh, mm. sexism. So I don't know that she. I think her narrative is that she doesn't get booked. Oh, is that right? I saw a narrative. Oh, boy, narration, eh? But she's in some great stuff, and she's terrific and hilarious. Yeah, yeah. She's cool. Uh, and not not bad on the eyes. That's what I mean. Uh-huh. Well, I think I told you that time I was on, uh, what do you call it, Bonfire. Mm-hmm. And I was like, to me, like my like hottest woman is like Parker Posey. They were all teasing me because they were all doing porn stars right, or whoever these right. like hot supermodels are. And then it became like a debate of whose was the hottest. Then it became everyone put in ten bucks and we'll vote, and I'm like, wait, now I'm losing ten bucks. Yeah, that doesn't make I'm sense. I'm like, there's no way Parker Posey's gonna win. No. I wasn't. Sa- I'm saying she's who I'm into. Yeah, she can't even get a gig. I ended up losing ten bucks. No, that doesn't make sense. And it's first subjective. I'm like, I'm doing half a gag over here. Like, yes. obviously, she's like my number one. She's not the number one. No, she's not even the number one hundred. No, no, not even hundred thousand. So I lost the dough. Soda won, and he took pity on me and gave me my ten bucks back. He's well, a who, good person. Who did he pick? I, I mean, can't remember. This is like embarrassing. Again, no I, number one. I I don't know if I'm an old man or if I'm a good person, but I don't know any of the people. Everyone's like, I see, boobily boo and bippity bing yeah. and biggity. I'm like, I because I'm not a porn guy, as no, you know. But they're like Pete Davidson's fucking uh, jiggle guy. All like, these oh, people. I'm like, I never heard of these. I know no. Madonna. I'm old. Yeah, Cindy Crawford's around. I think Jenna Jameson was one that oh, I knew about. Yeah. And she uh, had huge cans. My number, my hot chick people that I like are all journalists. Like Hallie Jackson. I'm like, that's like my number one. I watch it every morning at 10 a.m. Yes. I love Hallie Jackson, Kristen Welker, and uh, oh, and uh, Nicole Wallace at 4 p.m. I'm a big MSNBC douche. Ooh, but they're behind, half, 80% of them are behind a desk. But they're, but they're sexy because they're, they're smart and they're dressed in like business suits and they're I asking like the that. president questions and yeah. uh, they're also just beautiful people. Sure. And uh, yeah, they're, I just, I like an intelligent Put together, uh, successful woman. Same. I love put together. Nothing I, worse than a scraggly broad. Yeah, and then power. I just wanted to put their heels up my asshole and like make me recite the Declaration of Independence. Ooh-wee. Something, something hot, you know. Four inches and seven pegs ago. I like a woman with money and smarts. Yes, just, like got me by the tie, just dragging me through her own shit. Yeah, because then we don't have to do it too. What? Well, if they're smart and have money, you can sit back a little. Oh, right. I'd love to sit back. God, I love a recline. Oh, uh, boy. When I was a kid, I had a thing for Oprah. Come on. <laughs> I swear to God. Well, in the 90s, she had a real fat run there. Yeah, but I don't know. Well, you know what it was? She my, had poofy hair and... My mom was gone a lot. I was, I'm talking like seven. Okay, all and right. And I, I looked to Oprah as this maternal cunt. Right. Like I saw her as a... I guess the, the the mom being gone triggered something in me, like mommy issues. Uh huh. And she was so fat and maternally, and she's giving cars away, and everybody everybody's crying. She's she's putting their their face on her bosom. Right. I think I wanted her as a mom, but then which translated into the boners. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's puzzling. It was very psychological. I remember thinking that a little bit about Ellen early on. Ah, like, I can fucking Ellen, you I know. I can see a fucking Ellen. Well, because she was funny. The shoulder pads, yeah, the, the weird mullet. I've always liked funny and that she good. seemed cool and I didn't know what a lesbian was. I was like, okay, well, whatever. Maybe she'll like me. Yeah, well, you look like uh, Anne Heche. Uh... <laughs> She goes back and forth, that Haitian. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. She's Haitian. <laughs> um, Haitian that sensation. Didn't, that didn't make sense. Hey, I got to start to wrap up here. Oh, I, God. Got, I got to go straight to therapy. All right. I heard that Anne Haitian is a real Luno. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's the rumor. Well, I guess, yeah. I don't think she's great either. Oh, really? As an actor. Mm, Ronald good, Reagan. Good as actor. a lesbian. I guess so. She looks the part. Uh, what she? She's in Donnie Brasco there. Yeah. I didn't think she was great in that. She was in uh, Six Days, Seven Nights. Oh yeah, with Ford, right? Of the Harrison variety. Yes, yes. Harrison Ford. I just read the entire Wikipedia page of Han shot first. You know the big oh, Star Wars uh, controversy. Greedo. Yeah, and uh, Harrison Ford's quotes was. I don't know, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> I love, like he's like, I moved on. I'm Indiana Jones. <laughs> yes. I'm fucking Doctor Kimball. I don't give a fuck. Who right. shot. What are you talking about, you goof? I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. Oh, every outhouse, bitch house, porthouse, 
bag house, whore house. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's he's fun. He, he, he always say, you got to go to Comic-Con. He goes, blow me. I'm getting in my uh, mini plane and flying around the world. Yeah, it's fun. I love that. Yeah, he's got an earring, though. That's a problem. Oh, does he? Get rid of the loop there, Harry. Hate it, the loop. It ain't working. Boy, Apocalypse Now. Just watch that. How about that? this feeling? We got we to gotta go. But How yeah. about this feeling? This is like this is where the road is nice sometimes. When I was in last week, I was in, I don't know where the fuck I was, Albany. I come home after the early show. Thursday is just one show. And I was like, I'll go back to my room and see what's going on. Turn on the TV. Opening sequence of Apocalypse Woo! Now. Huge TV. I go, this is great. I ended up doing Insta stories of every clip. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't stop. And uh, speak that, oh, Harrison Ford reminded me of it. But so exciting when you get back to the, this is the little things you have when you're sober, is you turn on a TV and you're like, Fucking Apocalypse Now's on a movie channel too, not some AMC oh, shit. Oh no, commercial! Straight through, you fucking throw your feet up and go. Oh, I'm home free, and you yes. watch one of the great fucking masterpieces of all time. The only thing better than that is you get a meal cooking with it. Yes, a or meal a snack, but I know you can only eat leaves and dick. I know I can't leave late at night. Yeah, uh, we don't have any food at all. Leaf, remember uh, Vaderot's bit. Oh, at the hipster places. Yeah, that was we don't great. have any. He's like, we don't have any uh, meat or hormones or GMOs or any food whatsoever. He goes, you just sit on a leaf. <laughs> and then he goes, yesterday I sat on two leaves. I'm such a pig. Oh, he's like, check out Nick Vatter. He did a live app, by the way, with Burt Kreischer. Oh, that's right, the L.A. That's another one of the funniest people I fucking ever. Burt Kreischer on a live. Oh app. yeah, Burt Kreischer's on a fucking live episode. We got him before he popped at the Improv. Maybe we should do an L.A. one. Oh, talk about that after Santa Ana, maybe. I love an L.A. one. I'm going in January. I'm going in after Santa Ana. Maybe ah. we do an L.A. We'll figure it out. All right, we'll figure. Or maybe we'll do a Jan. All right, so find your, your vice, folks, and get rid of it. Go sober. And sober might not be just booze. It might be that uh, twat of a partner or that douche of a of domestic abuser. So figure out what it is and give it a quit. Yeah. Everybody quit something. Don't quit the pod. I can't quit you. No, stay on the pod because we've really got a little momentum going here. Yes, not after this step, maybe. It's exciting. Well, this is a weird one. This is like a very special episode. Yes. Um, special. This weekend, big weekend for me, DC Draft House. Woo! I love that club. We've talked about it before. It's my favorite comedy experience. Friday and Saturday, and uh, I want them to keep booking me because I love the club. You'll get some sellouts on it. A lot of gays in the Dees. I hope. So come to the shows and then laugh, boss, in the week after that, Thanksgiving weekend. Come to Friday or early show Saturday. I want to hit one of these bonuses. Oh, Sell yeah. that fucking thing out. It's a home show, and I haven't been there in a long time. Yes. So for God's sakes, all of my self-esteem is riding on this weekend. Is the family going to watch? Ah, uh, They'll probably come. Ah, I'm sorry. And then Cleveland Hilarities, December 5th through the 7th. Sarah will be with me on all three of those dates, oh, actually. Yeah. Good salmon over there. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'm excited. I'll eat healthy there. They feed mm. you well. Ooh, and yeah. then uh, Santa Ana, the weekend after that, December 13th and 14th, oh, I think yeah. that is. We got to make a choice on, I feel like we should do stand-up the first night and... Uh, pod the second and we could do a little bit of ball we could do, we could do 15 and 15 then a 50 minute podcast yeah we could like just that. sit up there together something like that that's not bad but come to that and then uh houston and lafayette december 20th and 21st uh, i've tweeted those out check those out or email me for details i'll put them up on the insta story follow me on instagram suck your father's dick where are you gonna be yeah thanks for the live app folks thanks for buying shirts thanks for coming we'll see you in santa Ana. Uh, this weekend, I'm opening for the big sign, if he doesn't hear this. Wow. Then uh, some fun gigs. I'm in uh, Philly for a pop-up show, like 10 tickets left. Hoboken, uh, Medlin, New Jersey. Look on the fucking interwebs for those tickets. Blue Room, hello, Portland Helium, Sacramento, San Francisco Punchline, San Francisco Punchline. Yucks in Vancouver. I yes. picked up a Vancouver date, God Fuck damn it. yeah. Side Splitters in Tampa. Uh, we're going to Cellar Vegas in March. April, I think. April. Is that confirmed or what? Oh, shit. Never mind. La Jolla, uh, outside of San Diego, Gotham Comedy Club, uh, St. Louis, Helium. Uh, we're doing Skanks in Houston yes. together, and we're doing Moon Tower. So we're all over Tejas. I know. we got a lot of stuff coming up, yes. and it's getting bigger. Get on the Patreon. Yes. Every fucking live episode. Ari Shafir, Michelle Wolf, Bert Kreischer, Dan Soder. We haven't had Patton on one. No. He hasn't been available. We got to get Patton in there. Love Jesus him. Christ. Nikki Glazer, yeah. Oh, the Nikki one's amazing. The Giannis one's amazing. Yes. Check out Giannis's special on YouTube. Yes. And, oh, yeah. Um, Listen to Laughable. 
Laughable. Fuck yeah. Download the Laughable app. We're invested in that motherfucker. And yeah. it is great. I do use it, actually, to go look. Uh, I shouldn't say actually. I do use it because yeah. it's great. You look up any comic, every podcast I've ever done is on there. You got that right. So download the Laughable app. If you're not using Laughable, you really are lo- using podcasts incorrectly. Yes. Oh, we probably should have had an ad on this episode. Oh. We'll have to plug it in. And I'll post. plug it in later. Okay, that's all um, right. Yeah, and uh, follow Tuesdays with facts. Yes, it's really fun. Yes. And uh, check a- out all those podcasts we mentioned. Yeah, we got a Facebook page. You want Starbucks, Uber, Chipotle, Uber? Uh, go to our websites and uh, go gay. It all helps. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate it. Praise Allah. <laughs>